and your lactation consultant. So today, it's another day na magdi-discuss naman tayo ng mga katanungan ng mga nanay that uh, have some problems with breastfeeding or some problems with formula feeding at uh, some problems with how your baby is growing. Kaya sasag sasagutin ko ngayon yung mga katanungan nyo dahil alam kong I always look at all those uh, inquiries or mga question na, na, na tinatype nyo and hindi ko yun ini-ignore kahit na gaano ako ka-busy dito sa Canada talagang I paid attention kung ano yung mga tanong, katanungan nyo so previously may mga nagtatanong about babies na dumidede kaya kayo nagmi-mix feeding very common problem po yan lalo na sa mga first time mothers dahil feeling nyo talaga minsan wala kayong milk your milk is not enough for your baby kaya napilitan kayong mag-mix feeding don't feel guilty about it ito lang masasabi ko sa inyo wag kayong mamong problema wag kayong may inget sa mga nanay na um, very successfully nag breastfeed sila wag kayong ma-insecure sa sarili nyo na you have no capability to fully uh, exclusively uh, breastfeed your baby, may dahilan kung bakit hindi magbe-breastfeed si baby. Kaya kayo ay nag, um, nag-formula feed, kaya kayo nag-mix feeding. Under na naintindihan ko yan dahil nakikita ko yan sa mga pasyente ko sa aking clinic. So, don't feel bad about it. Ang, ang, oh, the only thing that's in the positive side na lagi nyo talagang isipin, alam nyo ba? <laughs> Excuse me. Ang bata lumalaki every week, every month, pag lumalaki ang bata, nagbabago ang behavior ng bata. At nagbabago din ang feeding, feeding pattern ng baby. So, it may take a while, it may take months, it may take days, bago mo talaga mag-feel na, oh, marunong pala ang baby kung mag-lats. Siguro nagkamali lang ako pag-hold, siguro nagkamali lang ako pag-position pag ni baby, siguro talagang mm, hindi ko maisip minsan na feeling mo sig ito kasi ang lagi kong sinasabi ang naiisip kasi nating mga nanay when it comes to breastfeeding na paglabas ni baby milk ka agad lagi lagi kong i always say this many 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 times it may not happen to you after 5 days it may not happen to you after a week or 2 weeks or even 2 months na marami ka ng gatas so just accept it with capital A okay just accept it na hindi nyo talaga kayang i-fully, exclusively breastfeed si baby. Kaya kayo nag-mix feeding. It's okay. As long as healthy si baby, nakakatulog si baby ng mahimbing, nakakapag-poop at pee si baby, nakakatulog ka ng mahimbing, or if you're working right now, may peace of mind ka while working na alam mong dumidede si baby, kahit na hindi successful itong breastfeeding, okay? So, don't feel bad about sa mga nanay na may mga reason kung bakit kayo nag-mix feeding. It's okay. Just wait maybe 5 months, lalo na pag medyo active na si baby, siguro si baby marunong nang mag -lats. So, just take it easy, okay? So, I want to address a few questions here na tinatanong at isishare ko sa inyo para medyo madadagdagan yung kaalaman natin because you never know you may be decided maybe two years or one year one year from now you want to have another baby so here's the question what's the difference between preterm milk and full term milk ibig sabihin ano daw daw ang diferensya sa paglabas ng ating preterm milk ibig sabihin the baby was born maybe two or three weeks before maturity as compared to a matured milk, meaning baby was fully 39 weeks uh, when you gave birth. So, anong difference ng milk noon? Ito ang minsan hindi nasasagot ng inyong mga uh, healthcare provider dyan. So, isi-share ko sa inyo as a lactation consultant perspective para alam ninyo kung anong difference. Okay. The biggest difference, this is based on study, okay? I just want to make sure, mas maraming Mas maraming, there are more fat in your breast milk if you have a preterm birth. Okay? That's based on study. 
than full-term babies. Could you imagine? Akala niyo, pinanganak kay, uh, you gave birth to an earlier baby and you think that wala kayong milk. Yes, you have milk. Maybe not sufficient milk. Pero ang taas ng fat ng milk sa preterm birth as compared to full-term birth. Tandaan nyo yan. Remember that, okay? Because some healthcare providers may not uh, may don't know about this uh, research, okay? Another thing that um, the difference is yung proteina, the protein content of your breast milk in um, preterm, preterm baby is three times, okay? Three times in the colostrum compared to mature milk. Uh, I'm gonna explain again. Yung protein, so so when you're in your in our colostrum during the first three days, maybe four days, the highest amount of um, components or nutrition in our milk is protein, sodium, calcium, and other minerals. Yun yung pinakamataas dun dun sa mga three days, five days to four days. Dun sa mga colostral phase na yun. Ngayon, pag ang baby mo is, you gave birth to a preterm baby, it's three times, three times higher protein level of in your milk, okay, as compared to mature milk. So let's say, this is just an example. Let's say, ang level ng protein ng milk mo, let's say, I'm just, I'm just making this up, okay? Uh, maybe three grams, whatever, whatever. So triple, pag preterm birth ang baby mo, um, um, pag preterm birth ka, okay? So that answers the question, why is it important na ipadede talaga natin yung single golden drops, drops or drop ng colostrum nyo after you give birth. Why? Kailangan yun sa baby yung protein, kailangan yun sa baby yung mga fats, di ba? When the baby has is able to get those fats of milk, lalo na pag preterm ang baby mo, or lalo na pag maliit ang baby mo, nakaka, it, it really helps the baby to gain more weight uh, in a fast way. Pag i-maintain mo talaga na maipa-feed mo kay baby yung pinakaunang droplets ng colostrum mo, okay? There are some moms, ito na experience ko, okay, when I was working in the hospital as a lactation consultant. There are some moms na sasabihin sa akin, Alona, I don't plan on breastfeeding for long term. May mga nanay na they already set their mind na, may mindset na nga sila na uh, hindi ako magbe-breastfeed ng matagal dahil isa may trabaho ako, isa pa gusto ko magpahinga. Wala yan sa plano na ng mga ibang mga nanay. And I, and I respect that. Now, there are some moms na sasabihin sa akin, alone na ang gusto ko lang na paglabas ng baby ko, makatikim sa baby ng colostrum ko, and then that's it. Siguro magbubote na lang ako when I come home, or siguro I'll just do mixed feeding when I come home. So, I agree with it. Um, at least they have a plan. At least they're, they're concerned that they they're really want their baby to get the colostrum after birth. So, kayo kung buntis ka ngayon, okay, kung buntis ka ngayon and you really prioritize, let's say, uh, it's so hard now if the, the husband only works, kailangan both partners na may trabaho, if you need to work, then you have to plan how you're gonna feed your baby when you're working. So, if you plan the saying that, oh, I, I just want to make sure na makukuha ni baby yung the most nutritious milk and then when I'm done, I'm just gonna do mixed feeding, go ahead, okay, go ahead. As long as you make sure na ma makakapag padede ka or or in any uh, feeding feeding accessories gagamitin mo either you're gonna use a feeding tube you're gonna use a syringe you're gonna use a spoon or you're gonna use a a, a cup to get that baby the colostrum pag hindi maglalat si baby okay never give up ito ang napampasin ko sa mga pasyente ko. As soon as they compress, pag ikaw-compress nila yung breast nila and then wala sila nakikita drop, 
drop ng colostrum after one day or two days, they just give up. And then, pagdating ng nurse, sasabihin ng nurse na, oh, what you gonna do? Paano na yun? Walang gatas. Oh, here comes the body kaagad. No. Don't be too worried. Itong sinasabi ko, don't be too worried if today, after you give birth, there are no drops of colostrum. It may happen tomorrow. It may happen the next day. So again, do not panic as long as you know that your baby is healthy. Pag healthy si baby nyo, at walang mga complication after birth, it's okay, even though the baby will not be able to get the milk right away, okay? Because again, based on study, there are extra body fluid and extra fat on the baby after birth. And the baby can survive even 24 hours. No food, no eating. Four, for babies who are healthy, for babies without any complication, for babies who are really, really uh, full term or babies who are really, really healthy. So don't panic na, oh, it's been 24 hours, the baby uh, never have a drop of milk. Think about it. If the baby is is uh, um, mahimbing lang, hindi maputla, uh, hindi siya lethargic, lethargic, mag-ibig sabihin, ito ang tandaan nyo talaga mga nanay, okay, or mga buntis. Kasi minsan hindi in-explain din sa inyo minsan. A lethargic baby after birth, let's say after a few hours, pag yung baby nyo na nakakano na lang, na yung kamay hindi gagalaw, pag ginaganon mo yung kamay bumabagsak, yung bunganga naka-open, hindi na maklose, lethargic. Ibig sabihin, either the baby needs to have some fluids or the baby probably um, naka, ang tawag nito, uh, hypoglycemic. Ibig sabihin, bumaba na yung sugar ni baby. Ang mahirap dyan, siguro sa Philippines, napapansin ko lang, hindi tinitest ang mga newborn, lalo na mga high-risk newborn, sa blood sugar nila after mommy gave birth. So, paano nyo malalaman na bumaba na pala yung sugar ng baby nyo after 8 hours na hindi dumede yung baby? Hanggat makikita nyo na lang na si baby lethargic na, ayaw ng dumede kasi mababa yung sugar. So, again, nangyayari ito sa mga babies whose mothers are uh, have gestational diabetes. So, kailangan nyo talagang, so because once the baby is released from the womb, and then may gestational diabetes si mom, siyempre nag-a-adjust yung katawan ni baby kasi nasa labas na siya eh. Hindi na siya nakakain kung ano may yung kinakain niya from the umbilical cord. So, yung body ni baby was adjusting, kaya risky si baby na bumababa yung sugar dahil si nanay may history ng gestational diabetes. Iyan ang minsan hindi naiintindihan ng mga nanay at hindi din minsan ina-explain ng mga healthcare provider kung pa, ba, bakit kailangan natin talaga na ilatch baby or bakit talaga kailangan natin na si baby makakuha kahit konting drop ng kolostrum ninyo para magkakaroon ng uh, protein, calcium, sodium, whatever na the, the blood sugar of the baby will not drop. So I hope this question helps you to understand the importance of colostrum, the importance of first latch, deep latch, to get this first drop of colostrum. And I hope next time you'll have your own question. Tanungin niyo ako kung anong gusto niyo tanong regarding your birth, your pregnancy, your breastfeeding, or anything about, about your baby. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like this video, you can share this video. Alam kong, there are so many moms out there who really need um, right information, evidence-based information that hindi gawa gawa and uh, it's not fake news. So make sure that you share this video. And just a reminder, my breastfeeding book will be coming soon. I'm still waiting for the printing of my breast breastfeeding book. So. Keep an eye on it. Ipapakita. I'll show it to you. I'll, I'll, I'll post it once it's ready. Again, thanks for watching. Bye for now.